Welcome back everyone to the BD1P random character streak. Today is going to be a random tainted run as is tradition on this channel. Today's question of the day is going to be, what was the last movie that you saw in theaters and what is the next one that you want to go see in theaters? Without further ado, let's get started here. Hit random and hope for nothing too terrible. <clears throat> Am I th I'm sorry, my throat is like absolutely, oh great, killing me today. Uh, your seat is going to be... Of course, no, nice. Uh, CVLN8K46. So recently, I'm not going to give any spoilers, obviously, but I did uh, recently go and see, I will put you right here, the, um, the new Spider-Man movie. And I got to say, 100% do not miss it. Dude. It's actually insanely good. Now, I know I've been critical of Marvel in the past, and <clears throat> I will always continue to be. Oh my god, hello, beautiful. I will always continue to be, because I think that Marvel uh, is really not that good. They, they're, they're the same as DC, where it's kind of just like... They they follow these tropes too hard. Or, you know, I'm not going to get into it too much right now, because I talk about it like every other episode, but I want to talk about Spider-Man. I think, in, in my eyes, it's an 8 out of 10 movie. It is like... Close, it's close to nine, honestly, but there's a couple of things that draw it back. And again, no freaking spoilers here, but uh, I will say the beginning of the movie, it takes way... Like, okay, so the, the trailer built up the movie a lot. Everybody knows that Green Goblin's there, Doc Ock is there, and stuff like that. You know, that that's common knowledge at this point. That's, that's big common knowledge, but because we all know that we're looking for those characters, and the movie takes forever to get to them, and it, it kind of makes the beginning a drag. However, it's not a terrible thing because, you know, it is a little bit interesting in the beginning and stuff like that. And there are there are important plot points there. But the next point I want to bring up is that it just uses way too much of the, ooh, the classic Marvel humor, as we all know and love. of Just like the kind of like, how do I explain this? The Marvel humor of being like, you know, I have everything under control. Character turns around. What are we going to do about this? Like, it's not funny. Like, it's just, it takes up way too much time at the beginning of the movie. The entire, like, first half is just... How many stupidly awful jokes we fit into this one, like, 45-minute segment? And, and it does drag on for what I believe to be way too long. However, once the movie does get, like, started all the way, it is... You are glued to the screen the entire time. There are heavy-hitting emotional scenes. Like, it just... It comes together so nicely by the end. But just that, that, that beginning part that takes way too long to get to... Um, and then once they do get to it, too, they kind of, like, cut it off pretty fast as well. And it's, it's just kind of just, like, really... Like, it was just getting good, and they're going to take it away from me right away. Like, okay, thanks, man. Again, no spoilers, no spoilers, no spoilers. Uh, and then aside from those two gripes, my, my I think my third and biggest gripe out of everything here is um, Peter's best friend, Ned. Ned has been a returning character since the first new Spider-Man movie, uh, because I guess the writers just love using him for whatever reason. And, you know, he's fine. Um, he usually doesn't play a huge role in these movies, but in this one... He is just insufferable. Like, every time he was on screen, I wanted to, like, close my eyes and just wish for a better tomorrow. It, it was genuinely, like, painful to watch that actor on screen and watch him. Because, like, he is not the main focus, and he shouldn't be the main focus of these movies. He's he's a side character who's meant to be kind of an annoying friend, and that's it. And he only comes across as annoying and friend, and not even, like, a side character. He comes across as a main character, which is, like... It doesn't fit. You're trying to balance so many storylines and characters that trying to throw a, a Ned who was like the most least interesting guy ever in there. It just doesn't make any sense. But I wanted to also talk about today uh, the kind of a theory that I had about Spider-Man as a character and as a whole. Have Spider-Man movies ever really been good? Because I, I, so before No Way Home came out, I went back with Desi and we watched every single Spider-Man movie, including Spider-Verse. And I will say... Spider-Verse is the best Spider-Man. It, it still is in my eyes better than, than No Way Home. It, it's so much cooler. It has, you know, more of a unique style, less stupid humor in it, less annoying characters, etc. Stuff like that. But the live-action ones in particular, have those really ever been good movies? Because, like, it's no surprise to any of that. I'm not a big fan of Maguire. I think Maguire is not a good actor. I think that in every situation, he is, you know, the worst character on the screen, especially in his own movies. And... I, I just don't like watching him. And the Andrew Garfield ones, he's a great Spider-Man, but he's not a great Peter Parker. But um, those movies struggle from having interesting villains. The, the villains in the, the Garfield ones are not that fun to watch or be around. That being uh, Lizard and Electro, who are just kind of like... They feel like cheap imitations of what were Maguire's villains, who were actually really, really good villains, but Maguire just made them, made the movies so much worse, in my opinion. But, like, so, Garfield has a good Spider-Man, really bad supporting cast. 
uh, the, the Raimi ones have a really bad Spider-Man and a really good supporting cast. And the Tom Holland ones just have a weird middle ground of all of those, but kind of on, like, on, on the worst side, I think. I know I do really, really like um, Far From Home. As a, the Far From Home was a great Spider-Man movie, but that's in the context of them all being Spider-Man movies. Like, in, a, in terms of an actual, you know, this regular movie in the grand scheme of things, I don't think that a Spider-Man live-action film has ever really been considered a great movie. At best, they're just good. Um, I, I, you know what? I, we, we can try this. We got Butt Penny, which is not what I wanted to see there. All right. And I, I come to this conclusion because of a couple of things. Number one, Tom Holland has still not sold me on him being Spider-Man yet. Uh, it, he just... He feels like... Uh, how do I, It's so hard to pinpoint it, but he doesn't feel like a Spider-Man to me. Like it, I don't know if it's Marvel being the way that this current Marvel universe is. that it kind of, He just feels less important or what, but I have not once like been able to... We'll do this right here. Watch this. We'll do this, and we'll do this. And we can do one of these. Oh, dude, so good. I'm so happy with the way this turned out for us. Beautiful stuff. Actually incredible. And what do you got for me? Meat? All right, that's fine, man. That's fine. Let's go for our second item before we walk into that boss fight in case there is health for a devil deal, something crazy like that. But Tom Holland has not sold me yet. He is... He's too much as he is in real. He's a soft boy. He's a soft boy Spider-Man, and I hate it. I, I hate that motif so much. Like, when he is at his best, he is probably the best Peter Parker and Spider-Man, but he is rarely at his best. There are two main... Or there's actually only one scene that I really like from him in the new one that I was like, that's amazing. I'll go for blind. I don't want to waste a... I'll, I, I would waste a bomb for a free guy there, but not right now. We don't have any bombs to, to really use, but... Like, at his best, he's the best Peter Parker and Spider-Man, but at, at his worst, or at his, like, normal, he's just worse than both of them. And, and, like, you know, it's the whole, like, saying of, you know, we're greater than the sum of our parts, which means, like, you know, together we are greater than just as we are apart. I'd rather have... If you took Andrew uh, Garfield's Spider-Man, yes, Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man, and Tom Holland's Peter Parker, you would have what I would, like, I would think a perfect Spider-Man, or at least as close as we've gotten this far. Uh, but individually... Okay, so you throw this over here. You keep that alive. You get, you get some you get some stone poop in there. And get the poison down on, on little blub. Dude, lovely. Oh, you um, you dodged my poison attack. You actually just dodged my poison attack. Okay, I got stone now. I got stone. It's not making my thing stone? Interesting. You're on the, you're on the poop trail, aren't you, though? Like, my stone poop is on my trail, but it's not giving me the, the stone buff. What about now, though? Nope. It's, does it not give you a buff for the stone? I thought it did give you a stone buff. I must be mistaken there. That is entirely my bad. That is entirely, oh, my bad. But, uh, like, he hasn't sold me. His performances have been a little bit lackluster. I feel like he lacks the... Because, like, Spider-Man's supposed to be... Should I go in? I'll, I'll walk in. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Spider-Man is supposed to be, like, snarky and comical. He, he's like the Flash of, of, um, of Marvel. And Tom Holland is, is, like, rarely ever snarky, rarely ever, you know, quippy. He's just, like, super, you know, blue, like, Boy Scout. He's, he's a Boy Scout, and it doesn't work in the character for me. Also, we've had, we've had two Dross XLs in a row in our, for our runs here. I kind of hate it. We can go back and grab little Steven right now, I guess, and hopefully get access to our cursed room through a... Maybe a secret room? We probably should use our diarrhea in here to get... Oh, okay, so it can't be up, but it, it can be down here, right? It can be right here. It definitely can be. Hold that. I guess I guess you're not there. I guess you are next to our other item room, huh? Well, we can now just like... And then run away. That should hit the rock. Perfect stop. Okay, grab that. And you leave the room. It's a fly generator, so you walk back in, and it's gone. Alrighty. But yeah, I, I don't know. Like, he just has not sold me on his performances yet. He feels like he lacks the emotion that Spider-Man needs. Like, Spider-Man's supposed to be... We don't see Peter Parker struggle a lot, right? We don't see Tom Holland, you know, like, have, like, struggles. You know, we, we see Tobey Maguire, we see Garfield both struggle a lot with their identity and their loss of their loved ones, like, so much in their movies. Peter Parker hadn't really... Aside from losing Iron Man, which wasn't really... It didn't feel like a huge deal to us as a viewer... Aside from that, like, we haven't really seen him lose anything 
And I'm not going to say he loses or doesn't lose anything in the new movie because that could be a spoiler, but you just there there isn't much there for I think us to go off of in terms of like he's had three movies, right? And if he hasn't proven like to the audience that he is a fit to play the role, I just feel like it, it, it's past his time. And he did say in an interview that he wants to stop acting and focus on settling down and starting a family, which is, he's like, what, 20? Kind of a weird thing to say, I feel like, but uh, more more power to him, I guess. Um, I mean, he just hasn't sold me yet, you know? I'm still waiting for the Tom Holland moment. I mean, Peter Peter Parker, you know, McGuire had his moment. Garfield had his moment, too, I think, um, with, I would say, Spider-Man 2. Like, Garfield didn't really have his moment until... I feel like the end of Spider-Man 2, like the very, very end. So he's not in much of a better ballpark than than current current uh, Tom Holland is. But McGuire had his moment, you know, with with Uncle Ben's, and I, I guess Garfield had his Uncle Ben moment too. But the, I think that McGuire or um, Garfield's was not as impactful as Toby's was for his Uncle Ben moment. Sadly enough, because I think I think that Garfield had potential to be the best Spider-Man there was, but the writing just sucked. Regardless of that, either way. Uh, we were gonna, if we bomb, this will hurt ourselves, so no thank you. I know it's confusing talking about, like, three different actors who all play the same fucking dude, but just bear with me for a minute here. I'm, I'm gonna get to a point eventually. Like, if you look at all these other Spider-Men that have played them, even, even Miles Morales, uh, in Spider-Verse, they all had their struggles that felt like they were, you know, going to affect the character a lot. We saw a lot of Peter, uh, I gotta stop using Peter. We saw a lot of ho Tom Holland's fallout in Far From Home. But that was very much like stuffed under the rug when Mysterio came into the picture. Because Mysterio became, you know, his new kind of role model for a bit in a way. That hit me. The range on that pooter, man. Oh shit, you are you are balling right now. Uh we, we saw like so much struggle and with with Tom, we just haven't seen that same struggle yet. And it kind of just goes to show that without that personal connection or that personal loss factor that a lot of the other characters have, you really can't have Spider-Man. You can't have he needs to lose something to be Spider-Man. You know, he has to learn the whole responsibility thing, and it took him, I'm not going to say whether it was this one or the next one, but it did take him quite a while to have his moment. You know, I'll buy it. Yo, you know what? Not bad for getting poops and hearts and stuff like that. Not bad at all. It's just frustrating to me just to see, because Holland could have a great performance, but it kind of feels like that the, the Marvel writers, dude, I hate the explosions right now. They're, they're so big. Don't hit them. It feels like the Marvel writers is trying to make him more of an Iron Man Jr. than actually being, like, his own character. Because he didn't, you know... We also never see, like... This, goes for, this is a general complaint for every Spider-Man movie. We always get told that Peter Parker is super smart, but we're rarely ever shown how smart he is unless it pushes the plot forward. Think of, think of like, any Maguire plot, right? He's supposed to be really smart, but he can't figure out who the hell any of these villains are. But he can, he can somehow, you know, make all these special inventions for Doc Ock and, and you know, Willem Dafoe's character. Like, it's, it's really only smart for plot convenience. And the same goes for Garfield, too. Garfield is shown to be a punk and a rebel, not someone who would think to be super intelligent when it comes to the scientific arts. But we only see him smart when it shows to help the plot move along with Dr. Connors and even with Electro, almost. Like, it's really strange how we never get to see them actually... That's really good, I feel like. Never get to see him actually use this smartness uh, in a non-plot progression way. Even Tom Holland is probably the guiltiest of that. Like, I, I can't say what happens in the movie, but there's a, there's a scene where he's trying to help a group of people. And he just somehow has this rare Tony, sec Tony Stark tech, and it helps him. Which is like, he didn't make it. He didn't, you know, change it. And even when it did change it, it was so, you know, complicated that... You'd think the scientist characters could figure it out already, but they can't. A 14-year-old, or I guess he's 15 now in the movies, 15-year-old kid who's just a sophomore in high school can suddenly figure out how to do all this complicated shit. It doesn't make any sense to me. The, the Spider-Man character, I don't think, um, will ever work on screen. I don't think Spider-Man as a character will ever really work as a movie. I think as a TV show, sure, but the Peter Parker character, the Peter Parker kind of like, how the character works and how he grows up and how he becomes smarter and uses his, his you know, skills for good, it doesn't really work on an on-screen format because a lot of, you know, Spider-Man's roots, oh my god, help me on this run, please. A lot of Spider-Man's roots come from him, like, you know, being smart enough to make his own web fluid and to deduce situations really fast and to help, you know, the villains get over themselves, but... And what we see in the comics and we see is his, like, you know, true blue character uh, actually accomplished that 
you know, through trial and error and through actually going through stuff and learning about, you know, how science works and how that'll affect the people around him. In the movies, we just see him go, oh yeah, I can do this thing with, with, with this uh, scientific machine. And it's kind of just like, it, it doesn't feel real. It, it just kind of feels like they're trying to, there we go, perfect. They're just trying to push the plot along in a convenient way for the writers without having to get into the nuance of why Peter is smart or how they can use his abilities. And I, I, I will, the argument's going to be like, oh, but we see Peter, uh, Tom Holland's Peter Parker. He's on, the, he's on the debate team and he's like the smartest guy there. Yeah, he's on the debate team. He never actually debates. He skips every debate club thing to go do Spider-Man stuff. We don't see him be smart unless it pushes the plot forward and then makes the character feel disingenuous. And, it, and like, that's why I think Miles Morales works so much better in Spider-Verse because he doesn't need to appear smart. This is his origin story right there. And none of his story came from him being intelligent. It's him, you know, coming across the spider and then tr like, being, you know, paranoid about it. He actually, like, it made sense for his character to not, you know, immediately be uh, a really smart guy who, need, who has all these skills. <sighs> Our items have been trash recently, man. Aside from, like, I would say Booster Pack, Wafer, and Sagittarius, we could be doing a whole lot better for ourselves right now. A whole lot better. Like, Miles never had a moment in the movie where, like, he was randomly smart just to push the plot along. He had his moments where he was intelligent when it came to common sense but everybody has common sense it's not, like, it's not the same thing at all in my eyes but I, I just don't think peter parker's character is going to ever properly work in a single film format so and, and it would be a really big waste of marvel's time to try and make a movie that's just about spider-man's origins and him just like you know going to school and shit so i don't think and it's not the writer's fault it's just the fact the character has so much nuance to him that it, it's hard to fit that into one movie and make it all make proper sense and make it not seem, I guess, pandering in a way. If that makes sense. That was almost a great dodge until it wasn't a great dodge. I've been super washed lately, man. I've been, I'm at two hearts right now. I've been super washed recently, man. I haven't been playing at my best. I've been venting about Spider-Man too much, honestly. But with those like big complaints about the character in, in every movie aside, the, the newest Spider-Man movie is probably the best and is going to be the best Spider-Man movie that I have ever seen. I mean, it's there are really hard emotional hitting scenes in there for fans of every era of Spider-Man, whether it be the villains from the oh nice, the villains from the old ones or the Tom Holland iteration. There's always going to be there's, there's something for everyone. There's something for everyone there. And I will do this, I think. Uh, I kind of wanted to have like something available here, but we can just throw a bomb in there. Oh, great. We got poop back and a key. My favorite. We literally wasted our time for no reason. All right. Fun, fun, fun. But we have decent damage now. Our tier rate is still kind of shit. We just got to make use of our poops a little bit better here and stop taking so much dumb and stupid damage. The positive here is that even if we only have high damage and nothing else, the finger kind of... Oh, my God. The finger kind of cancels that out. We are at one heart currently. Thank God for the wafer. Um, the finger does damage consistently without, you know, any relation to your tier rate as far as I'm concerned, at least. All right, here we go. Damn. <laughs> I had an almost idea there, but it didn't give me anything else to work. Fucking little harbinger. Fucking little harbinger. We're at half a heart, I think, right now. Oh, banter aside, it's time to play some Isaac, isn't it? Isn't it, chat? All right, we find that. No greed. No greed. This warfly might kill us. Do I see spirit hearts in here? Absolutely, I do not. I'm going to pop my queen of hearts card. We got no soul hearts. It's, it's only red hearts, I'm pretty sure. So kind of a useless gambit there. Uh, all right. Well, you better be hella careful here. You better be... Dude, the tear curve. That was crazy. Did not see that one coming. That was my own bad. I almost could have ate shit and died right there as I live and breathe. As I live and breathe. But I don't know. Like, it, it's really hard to focus on the, the scientific aspect of making Spider-Man, you know, feel like a person who is deserving and of, of his intelligence. But because the people want... They always want to see, you know, Spider-Man doing your friendly neighborhood Spider-Man shit. Which makes sense. That's what the character is mostly known for, is just his friendly neighborhood Spider-Man stuff. 
obviously... Okay, there is a window we can make it in here. Good stuff. Dude, I love you. I'm gonna take this for the finger. Well, first buy everything else you have. Uh, you can just rush to the end here. All right, let's do it. 18 damage finger. Who wants it? Who wants it? Yeah, we're gonna be doing a lot of damage for a minute here. Uh, we're gonna probably miss our item room, but that's okay. No, we already saw our item room. We're fine. We should go back for our super secret, though. Either way, I feel like. And get in there, do all this amazing piercing finger damage. Do our nails... Our nails still pierce. Okay, great. Let's go fight our boss with max damage here first. Oh, yeah, dude. Oh, yeah. The warfly in there is beautiful. His attack makes no sense to me. It rarely ever works as intended. We are going to... What? Next floor is, is, the, is the second one. We're going to use the Emperor card on Womb 1 to get hopefully have some red stew damage and also fight our boss with that same red stew damage. Hopefully. What's in here? I was hoping you would be here. I was hoping it was going to be an Aaron with a bunch of consumables for us. Actually, I'm very happy with this right now. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Now run as fast as your point, uh, your 1.1 speed can take you. Yeah, I, I just think it's hard to make Spider-Man work as a character on screen in a single movie format. And even when it comes to making multi multiple movies about the character... You want to focus mo mainly on, like, his heroic acts. So you can't spend an entire movie of a series, the first one, that is, having it be kind of boring and not lose interest in it as a whole. So I don't think he's ever going to work in an on-screen format properly. He's got too much, you know, uh, that goes, gets in the way of that. I think as a TV show, like a Disney Plus thing, you could have Spider-Man work. And they are going to be going through... They are making the Spider-Man... Uh, tie-in like a tv show um about peter parker's early days of spider-man tom holland's iteration which i think is a really smart and really cool idea it's just it's too late for me i don't care about tom holland's iteration anymore like you couldn't sell me in three movies a tv show is not gonna sell me you know you you you've you've lost me and it sucks i i do enjoy spider-man as a character he's probably my favorite marvel hero but it's just it's really hard to care about the film adaptation when they usually fuck stuff up or make really bad movies. I, I, I Homecoming, I'll be honest with you, Spider-Man Homecoming, the first Tom Holland one, wasn't a big fan of it. I When it first came out, I thought it was pretty cool. I watched it back recently. It was kind of trash. It was kind of boring, kind of trashy, and it didn't do anything we hadn't already seen. And the villain of that movie, Vulture, is pretty much just a Sam Raimi villain who, like a worse Sam Raimi villain, mind you, Dude, I'll, I'll take this. I'll take this. We have gotten no red rooms. Oh, you are you are a cruel mistress. You are a cruel fucking mistress. I I have to do it eventually. I got to get more HP for this first, but I have to do it eventually. They should make soul heart only characters. Like, it only takes either one or one and a half uh, soul hearts away when you use a reverse lovers or magic skin because I had some precious HP. That is some very precious HP for me. I, I don't like giving all that away, but... Looks like we may have to here, uh, on, a, on a very terrifying note. Back it up, okay. We got a red room open. This actually could be um, the red. It was not. It, it had the chance to potentially be uh, what we needed it to be. I, I will go in here. Ooh. I will be taking this over anything else right now. And praying for angel deals for the rest of the run here. Because that's an extra item for us. As long as we have a bomb available. Which I will be saving my bombs for angel statues now. That's a really good thing to find. And this will be our mom fight. We are not going to... Oh, item room? Item room? Yeah, go for the item room. We don't... don't Even though you have red stew, it's 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 too important. That that could be HP. It could be... If that's cancer in there or something, something like that, that could be insane for us. That will put us back on the map for winning this run. Because right now, a dog, I'm, I'm not so sure. We get a, a tinted rock, though. Um. Well, we would have had a tinted rock. We would have had a tinted rock, but we do not have any any explosions uh, available to us. No, we, we, we have one now. We have one now. Okay, we can go back for that, then. We can definitely go back and make that work. Hopefully, it's spirit. I wouldn't mind small rock or soul hearts. It's just no golden chest, no bombs or keys. We're fine. Oh, hello, beautiful. All right, a mom item for us. That's the transformation, I guess. Sure. Uh, I will be popping this as fast as possible as well. 
That's really good. Thank you for the one soul heart, I guess. Our biggest room over here is this one. Hoping for a petrified... Oh, we have another tinted rock. Ooh, oh, that was almost very dangerous. Okay. Use the finger. Use the finger here. This does so much clearing. Do I see a petrified yet? I do not see any petrified poop yet. We're getting money. We're getting money. I see a little harbinger up there. Not petrified. Poop. I thought it was the same thing because they're both gray. No soul hearts. No petrified. This stings. We broke open so many poops this run, though. Oh, man. It's all right. We still gained some stuff out of it, I guess. Uh, you go back for your lovers, your reverse lovers card, and then that's that. You go fight your mom. You, uh, have... You're gonna have, like, what, seven damage at the end of this red stew here? Take it or leave it, you know, for half price. It was worth the buy for sure, but... I, we, I, it just would have been nice to get more out of it. Hoping for an angel deal, we can maybe blow that up if we get one more little poop. We should go get, get the poop pieces. Those could be valuable for angel statues here. As long as we have one bomb available, I'm fine. We have, we have you know, explosive diarrhea right now, so we're gonna be a-okay. But I will say, like, I still think Spider-Verse is the better Spider-Man movie... It just, it, it's so cool, like, Tom Holland and, they're, they're, none of them are, like, necessarily terrible movies. I would tell them the M McGuire ones are close to terrible, some of them at least. I would say Spider-Man 3 especially is close to a terrible movie, in general. But, um, Spider-Verse is just untouchable. I mean, it did everything right. There was not a single flaw I could see in that entire movie there. You had the family, you know, strife and connections, you had the... The, the turmoil of, of Peter's inner mind kind of like, do is this worth it? Is Spider-Man good for me? Like, there, there was a lot of struggle in the movie, and it came across really, really well. And there was no sense of, like, I don't know. Because Spider-Man feels pretentious sometimes. Like, especially Maguire's interpretation is so egotistical at certain points that it's kind of just, like, almost unbearable to watch when he does stuff occasionally. We'll go Polaroid here, and I, I'm not going to walk him. The chance we can get a guaranteed angel deal over potential angel or devil is too much, too much for me. So we'll leave. We'll leave right now. Woo! Okay. Utero 1, Curse of the Unknown. Not my favorite thing. We can get more HP. We can eventually pop our Reverse Lovers card. If we can get, like, a uh, an angel deal into... Oh, I guess it doesn't matter if we don't go in there anymore. That kind of sucks. We can get a Reverse Lover's Card Angel Deal item, uh, Filigree Feather Angel Deal item, and the regular item that's always in there. So, like, we, we can do a lot of things. We just don't have a lot of DPS, you can tell right now. We're at 6 damage. This is worse than our last run. This is already worse than our last run. And that run yesterday, I mean, that was not an easy run to play. That, that kind of, it kind of stunk for a while. It smelled pretty bad for a little bit. Finger, please. I missed my red stew already. I missed my damage. Seven seals is kind of carrying right now. I respect that a lot. I'll go for the five cents in case we find money equals power later. But I just, I really want an angel deal. And we're probably not going to get one knowing how the game treats my my luck in that regard. But you know what, man? So, so what? Smooth sail from here on out. No, no complaints. Oh. Well. Okay. Uh, hmm. I take you. I take you for now. At the end of my floor, I come back for that. Before I fight my boss, I grab the, the filigree feather again. Because... If we... If on the chance we get an angel deal here, the 30% the chance to get a deal at all, and the 16 for an angel deal, the filigree feather could be a run winner. Ace of spades. All right. We do have an Emperor card, which I'm going to be probably using on the Cathedral because uh, I don't want to fight the entire floor with this amount of stats. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Good stuff. That was very, very nice. We have the Ace of Spades for a full room clear as well. Just counting just counting out my, uh, my stuff right now. Good kill. And you're dead, too. Okay. Grab this. Clear whatever hard room you find next with this, and then... This is a very, it's gonna be a very min maxi run. You know what? I hate everything in this room. Uh, this will be a very min maxi run when it comes to what we're doing with our cards and trinkets. But I do want to win for the streak. We haven't been getting like bad characters at all. We've been getting, aside from getting the lost and getting tainted keeper, 
we've been smooth sailing. We had a... Did we have an Azazel run? We did have an Azazel run, which became, like, really completely broken. So, like, we, we've had some good luck, but getting characters like this, who is either a... I think Tainted Blue Baby is a prime example of a character that either is going to be steamrolling for you, or you're going to be stuck in runs where it's, like, six damage for the rest of your life. Because you either get, like, you know, really good bomb synergies, or really good petrified poop stuff, or just, a like, good tiers that we've only gotten... How many tier stuffs have we gotten? Zero? You either get zero tears ups and uh, become a hero <laughs> or or die with, uh, you know, two tears and, and six damage here. Okay, do this, do this. Thank you for this and the secret room as well. You are definitely worth it. We have a lot of keys right now, thanks to options. Okay, that was four keys for... Uh, Three blue flies. Not sure if that was an equal trade deal. Getting a lot of red chests here, dog. That I don't want to open up because I don't want to go to a devil deal right now. I want to get an angel deal, so I can't even open these yet. You are such an ass. Ancient recall. Okay. That worked out way better than I thought it would for us. I've never seen a... Oh, because we have starter deck for card drops. Interesting. You're an asshole. I hate you. Uh, we don't want to pop that. We'll take the Emperor still. It's our best card we have. <sighs> yeah, continue on. Just go find your boss fight. Now, we, there's a, there's a, there's a, you know, a case to be made for sacrificing on a run like this because we can get a ton of angel items guaranteed with filig filigree feather that way. We just, with Curse of the Unknown and our HP being the way that it is right now, we don't really have the luxury of doing that, which hurts, which hurts. Here comes the sun. We might want to actually pop that uh, next floor. Wait, can we? Should we drop the reverse lovers card? We probably should. It's it's, it's only taking up space in our uh, limited inventory here. We might end up just taking that down to the next floor with us because we can get mapping for womb two and cathedral uh, emperor card. I mean that would that would be kind of like the dream. Another fly trinket, huh? All right. Do not fight your boss without the feather. Do not fight your boss without that feather. And go for a full clear as well for potential libraries, arc red poop. Potential libraries, arcades, other kind of special rooms. Oh no, two emperor cards is way fucking better. That is way better for us than a freaking sun card, dude. Hell yeah. We can now skip next floor and cathedral, which will be probably our play. If our HP is bad, I might play out the entirety of womb 2 and then use it on the chest instead, but... We'll see when the time comes, right? The getting the golden uh, abyss fly here is is kind of carrying. I'm saving my bombs and my poops for angel statues as well, because those are going to be a lot harder to deal with than your average enemies or bosses. So we're going to wait on those. I mean, 30 minutes on womb one. That's not that bad. We've been going pretty speedy here for one of the BD One Piece streak runs, I feel like. Usually we're a lot slower than this. If you're new to the channel because of yesterday's uh, tier list video, these runs are usually pretty slow because I like to make sure that I'm going to win by min-maxing and uh, not cheating. So, I, I tend to go a little bit slower on these. But I think it's I think it's for a good cause. I mean, we haven't lost in 100, like, 100 and almost 50 runs now. So, like, I'm doing something right here, I feel like. Whether it be uh, dumb luck or whatever. Dude, what are these reverse cards I'm getting here? The drop rate is insane. Dude, does starter deck increase your reverse card luck? It, it, it probably does, because we've been getting, ever since we got that item, so many more. It's a running trend on these runs, I feel like. All right, that is your full clear. That is your full clear. Uh, it is now just time to go and fight your boss. I'm a little nervous. Our HP is, I think we're at two and a half or three and a half hearts right now. Oh, great. You hide from me. Don't do it again. Thank you for eating that. The poison did not poison him. Yes, my poison you, though. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Please just die. Please. I hate you. There we go. Ah, no angel deal. Okay, I'm not going to take the filigree feather. Odds are we do not even find a angel deal in the rest of this run, nor have the power to kill a statue regardless. So I'm going to go all the way back for our abyss fly because it is a golden trinket. It is a golden trinket. Um, And those are, those are pretty rare. Pretty rare. But... Yeah, this, this run is in a really awkward place right now. It's going to make our, our next steamroll, though, feel so much better. When we get Tainted Isaac and regular Isaac, and we can use those to get some pretty powerful items, it's going to make those uh, feel a whole lot stronger. And I did notice uh, recently while playing with um, the Azazel Birthright run that we had, where we had, for some reason, like the, the rotating item choices 
that was like Swarm and Little Harbingers, which was really, really weird, that the second item in the rotation mimics the pool that you're in. It's like if we placed a regular judgment down in a secret room, the optional second item would end up being a secret room based item, I'm pretty sure, which is pretty uh, insane. So do we skip? Do we skip this floor? What is our HP at? Like four? One, two, three, four, five and a half. I say we skip this floor. I say we skip this floor. I don't want to fight through it. And the chest gives you a benefit for playing it out. So I'd rather just fight the entirety of the chest and skip these next two floors here. So, Mom's Heart, uh, here we go. Get on top of your little creep there. Thank you, little Harbingers. Thank you, little Harbingers again. All right. Stand stand down. Stand down. Get, get more on the ground here. There you go. Perfect. Now you just play up close and personal. Throw in your poops out whenever you feel the need to. We have a holy poop save for next floor's boss fight, by the way. I just haven't saving that one for because Isaac is kind of a bitch sometimes. And you're a goner. We actually got an angel. You're fucking kidding me, huh? Ooh. Well, the, the duality is useless. Can someone in, in the comments go to this floor in, in this seed right here and filigree feather this statue? I want to see what's inside of this statue for us. I'm curious now if it was super important or not. All right. We're going to Emperor card. We're going to Emperor card. There's no reason not to. It'll, it'll be a bit of a, a lamer floor here, but you know. Oh, wait. What do we have going on here, first of all? Nothing useless or nothing useful, so... Okay. We have the, the holy homing, like, mega tiers right now. With piercing. With piercing, don't forget. We should be A-OK -okay on the Isaac fight here. Okay, the poop is now gone. But this trail... Oh, it almost retained it for a longer amount of time. It did not, though. Get it in there. Get it in there. Beautiful. Now, hopefully he spawns in here again. Ah, uh, he did not. Good. Got the bomb damage out there, though. We have one Muker poop going on. And you're dead. You're dead. That was very easy. Okay. It's chest time with the mind. We can eventually technically skip all of our floor if we feel like it with the mind. And we had no curse to loss either. Surprising, Isaac. Surprising. That's fitting. That's really good. This is eh, and this is completely useless for us. It's part bookworm, I guess. And we'll go this way first so we can get into our secret room uh, with... What opened that up for us? Do we have... Why did that open up? We don't have x-ray goggles, do we? Or an I can see forever pill. Does Book of Secrets open up secret rooms? Is this a new thing? Or does using it with mapping give you secret rooms? Why did we... Does the mind do that? I am very confused. I am very confused, but... Hey man, you know, that's Isaac for you. Don't walk into the enemies, you fucking idiot. Do not walk into these enemies here. Get poisoned, bitch. This will be a one run. This will be a one run for us, which... We're under our belt, I guess. Not a very exciting one, but... Uh, a run nonetheless. It's a pretty short floor, though. I shouldn't complain. We have a very nice, a nicely shaped floor for our chest here. Oh, boy. Ooh, got a bomb out. Okay. Ow. Okay, just get in. Just get in there. You got a poison trail down here, kind of. It's all right. You, you, dude, we have the wafer. We're going to win either way, but the dumb damage does not help me win. The dumb damage does not help me win. It's just, it's, it's a combination of the finger... The Warfly, and just this character being in general not the greatest that makes this run a little bit humorous. Oh, we can capture a spider. We got one. Let's go, dude. Get it in you. There we go. All right, spider. This is your chance to prove me right. Go get him. Oh, no. Oh, no. Against his own father? Against the man's own father? Okay, get a bomb in there. Nice. And here comes the invincibility phase. Or skip it? Nope. Well, we did skip it. Nice. Okay. Key for your thoughts. Nice. You are you are a goner. You don't live that. You do not live that. Get over here. Uh, who do you want to kill last? Probably Gluttony for the HP. Uh, that would be nice. Or maybe we can kill Sloth for a card last. Nope. Gluttony is going to be. All right. Bye-bye. HP, please. I should have been more specific, I feel like, but that's fine. Goodbye. Goodbye. Ooh. Hey. Hey, Jude. Don't you shoot me. Nope. How? How do the bombs hit me but not you when they're that close? I'm going to have to file a restraining order against Edmund for hating me this much. 
We got the devil card. We can pop that in here. We can just start pelting this man. Full of oops. Good. That was some insane DPS off the bat there. I'm going to capture one of your flies, asshole. Spawn him. Spawn him. See if I care. See if I care. Get in there. There we go. I want to capture one of yours. I missed. Get the ball. Oh, no. Well, we, we win the run. Even if we take more damage, we're going to win the run. It's fine here. Get out there. Get out there. You're the wafer. You're okay. Our DPS, you can see right now, is, is not the most impressive thing. No void portal, please. No void portal. Thanks for the HP, blue baby, you son of a bitch. If you enjoyed that run, a like and a comment goes a long way for a smaller channel like mine. Aside from that, guys, though, I have been BD1P. Follow my Twitch, join my Discord, all that stuff. In the meantime, though, peace out and goodbye.